Hey, church family, great to be with you one more time this week. You know, we've been having this amazing week here at Rocky Peak as we've been pursuing the Lord in a really exciting way through a lot of different experiences and opportunities just to really pursue the God, the heart of God through prayer this week. Um, we've been having these conversations all week long with some of our pastors and directors about various prayer practices that they use to encounter God through prayer. And as you can see at the table uh, for this last day, we've got a few more people than we have the last few days. Um, I just want to start by introducing us. We've got Andy Otis here, who's one of our life group directors. Hi, Andy. Yeah. Hey, how's going? We've got Christy Enyart back, who was here earlier in the week. Thanks for being back, Christy. Hello. And of course, we've got Pastor Michael Yearly with us today. We are talking about uh, one more prayer practice today that we wanted to bring in a few more people for, which is specifically this idea, this practice of praying in the spirit or praying in tongues, as it's sometimes called. Um, I'll just be upfront about the fact that this is not something that I do. This is not something that I've ever experienced before. And so I'm excited to be here basically as a learner, um, someone to hear from you guys and what your experience has been through this. Michael, I'm really curious, you know, what was it about this moment, this season in our church that made you feel like, hey, it's time to really address this in a more direct way than we have before? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a really interesting thing. You know, we've always talked about this, that the Bible teaches uh, that the gift of tongues or, you know, in the Greek, it's just a gift of language, right? So it's a normal word, but the gift of tongues uh, is a gift for today, like all the gifts, that uh, no one has all the gifts. There's not one gift that's a, a sign of the Holy Spirit, um, but that this is one of the gifts. And we've talked about that before. I've shared about that as we've taught through 1 Corinthians last year and so on. But we've never really had a discussion about it, you know, like a more extended discussion. And so uh, when God was putting it on our heart to create this uh, week focused on prayer, you know, that we felt like God had created this culture of uh, worship here at Rocky Peak. And like the next step was to create a, a culture of prayer that we got together. You were there. We had about 10 or 12 of us in a room. And, and the question I had for our pastors, directors in that room was, what are some practices that God has used in your life? Uh, in a very personal and powerful way, not aspirational, like, hey, this would be something you can try, but something you've actually do. It's really meaningful. Um, and so as we kicked around different things, as people shared some of the topics we've talked about this week on the videos, yeah. that one of the topics that came up was praying in tongues. And I was kind of taken back, sort of surprised by that, yeah. but it was just beautiful. And a couple of people spoke up on that, and it just felt like, yeah, that just feels very natural that uh, there, are, there are many people in our church that have that gift. We don't really talk about it much. There are some that probably have come from a background that would say, hey, those gifts don't exist today, so be very foreign, and then there'd be some in the middle. And I just thought, what a great opportunity to talk about this and just uh, a way that would build up the body and uh, encourage those who have those gifts, maybe be an on-ramp for some who the Lord may want to give that gift. And so I'm just excited to talk about it here with uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ who have that gift. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I'm really excited about this. Like you said, I think there's probably a diverse group that's watching right now. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. maybe that practice this gift on a regular yes. basis. Yes. Some that come from a background where this is like very foreign mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of mystery around it. Yeah. And so I think all of us here have a heart to really just shine some light, bring mm -hmm. clarity to this gift, the purpose of it. Um, Andy, I was wondering if you'd be willing to just kind of share like what is the purpose of this gift in particular? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm going to go as usual, for <laughs> anything with spiritual gifts. I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 14, right? And so this is Paul. And he's basically, this is verse 2. He says, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God, right? And so what are we doing when we're, when we're speaking to God? We're, we're praying, right? So it's just another way he's saying is like, you're speaking in another language. You're speaking in a tongue. You're praying to God. Uh, and then in verse... Four, he says, anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So it seems like Paul is saying, like, you're speaking in tongues, you're praying, and you're edifying, you're encouraging, you're, however that works, I don't know exactly how that <laughs> works, right? Yeah. But it seems that Paul is saying, this is edifying yourself when you do this, when you go and pray in tongues. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah, and just really jump in there, too, is it? it's really interesting, because in this passage, if you go on reading, Paul says that this is a gift that he, that he exercises in his own life mm. more than than all than, than mm -hmm. any of them. Mm -hmm. um, but he says, but in a public setting, he doesn't use that yeah. gift because yeah. without the gift of interpretation, it doesn't really build up the body. Then yeah. later he says, I wish you all had that gift. You know, he's mm. already said in chapter twelve, we don't all have that gift. Mm -hmm. This is not. But it's an interesting thing when you think of the Apostle Paul, you think of such a cerebral, such a great thinker, mm -hmm. right? And yet he says here in his own personal life that he prays in tongues more than all of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is a really interesting scenario. Yeah. I'd yeah. love to unpack that word edifying a little bit. I don't know if that's necessarily common vernacular. Like, what, is that, what does that look like to experience edification, like, through yeah. this gift? Mm -hmm. Let you go for that. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I think to me it's it's a very mysterious thing because even when Paul talks about it, he says, like, I'm speaking, but my mind is unfruitful. Mm -hmm. So we don't really know exactly what we're mm. saying all the time, but we do know that it edifies us. And one of the verses that I love that um, talks about that is um, in Romans where it says the kingdom of God is a matter of righteousness, peace, and joy in mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. And so for me, when when I'm using my prayer language, I'm trusting that he's going to produce that fruit yeah. of righteousness, peace, and joy. I might not know how. I might not know what I'm saying. But somehow it's like I'm humbling myself before God and just saying, God, I don't really know what to pray for myself, but I'm trusting that you know what I need more than I know what I need. Mm. And so I just kind of trusting him to produce that fruit, even though it's mysterious. Mm -hmm. yeah, totally. <laughs> you know? I love that. That's awesome. I'd love to hear really just both you uh, and Andy, kind of what your initial like experiences were with this gift. If you came from a background where this was practiced and you saw it being practiced as kids or at a young age, or if it was something like new that happened later in, in your life, either of you could, could jump in. Yeah. Uh, the fun it's actually pretty funny for me. Uh, so I am pretty cerebral. Mm -hmm. uh, like my undergrad is in philosophy. I like to, I like to think logically. I like to think critically. Yeah. Uh, and so there was one time, probably about 12 years ago, I was in a life group and in the life group, we just had, we started off the night, we we're talking, it was a sermon on spiritual gifts, and we went through the list of, of spiritual gifts and said, hey, go spend some time asking God, hey, is there any gift you want to give me, mm -hmm. right, and praying? And for me, the gift of tongues, I, I came from, I, I was... I was never going to say that no one gets the gift of tongues, but I was going to avoid it at all costs, mm. basically. That okay. was my background. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm praying, I'm reading this list of spiritual gifts, uh, and I'm praying, I'm like, God, like, what, what, is there any gift you want to give me? Uh, and I felt like he very clearly highlighted the gift of tongues. Mm. And I was like, oh, man. Like, I, I, I didn't know what to do with that. I was like, I, but I was in a very humble spot. Like, okay, God, whatever you want to do, like, I'll, I'll be open to it. Uh, and so that was my background going into it. But it probably led me on a 10-year-long journey mm. of actually operating in that gift. Because it was like... It was probably two years of nothing. Like, I just remember, I remembered it. I held on to that, but two years of nothing from it, not even trying, didn't want to really try. Yeah. Uh, but I remember one time there was uh, someone I knew that I trusted, that yeah. I knew spoke in tongues. Uh, and I just, he, I just felt like the Holy Spirit was like, go have him pray for you. So I had him pray for me. Nothing happened, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. Uh, and I would say probably another year, two years go by. And I'm in worship, and I feel like there's a word coming out of my mouth that is not a word I would say in English, and I don't know mm -hmm. other, any, any other languages, uh, but I stop because mm -hmm. I'm like, this is weird. I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. I, I completely stopped myself. Like there was a syllable that came out and I was like, nope. And mm -hmm. so it was a very long journey of um, just, it would, it would come out in worship and a lot of times it would come out in spiritual warfare settings as well, praying for other people, dealing with spiritual warfare. But I would stop myself because I was so uncomfortable with mm -hmm. it. Uh, but then eventually... Uh, probably within the last two years, I just felt like the Lord opened it up more to mm -hmm. where my mind was free to be able to operate in it. And like that passage, it says, your mind is unfruitful. It messes with your mind. And I feel like that's why God wanted to give it to me because he wanted me to be able to pray in the spirit in a way that my mind uh, just can't really get to that mm. my spirit is able to get to with totally. the Holy Spirit. So yeah. that's my background mm. with it. So, so interesting, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that's that. Crazy. What about you, Christy? Yeah, um, my background, I remember learning about um, speaking in tongues in junior high, and I remember I was just kind of curious about it, and I remember um, my parents actually prayed for me that I, I could get that gift, and I just remember nothing happening, and just being like, okay, like, maybe that's not for me, I was totally fine with it, just kind of moved on with life. You know, he doesn't give the gift to everybody. And then it wasn't until I was in my 30s, actually, mm -hmm. and we were, my husband and I, we had moved to Canada to lead a church there. And God was, I was at a time in my life where God was just calling me back into ministry again. And I was getting ready to, it was a Sunday morning, I was getting ready to come on stage for something. And I was worshiping side stage while the band was playing, just like, you know, hands in the air, just totally worshiping on the side of the stage. And I had this feeling like, you know when you want to tell your friends a story, like you have some big news to like share with them? It was like almost that urge, like I just want to say something, I want to express something. And 
and I just kind of felt like, is this the Lord? And so I just kind of put like a voice behind it and just let it fly. And I realized, oh my gosh, this is the, this is the gift mm-hmm. of a prayer language. Wow. And it was just such a beautiful time because I was literally moments from going out on mm-hmm. stage. Mm-hmm. And I just felt in that moment, like it was a reassurance that God was with me at that time because it was the birth of a brand new season of ministry for mm-hmm. me. Um, and so ever since that time, it's just been a really important part of my prayer life, pretty regular, especially in times where maybe there's a lot going on in my life and I I just need to like take it straight to God. It's easy for me to like express things to him in that way. Um, So yeah, that's my journey with it. That's Mm -hmm. cool. I guess I'm just curious, like um, both of you shared, it sounds like both of your experiences, it was something that was kind of coming out of you, almost that, not that you didn't have control over it, but it was something that the spirit was prompting in you, right? It wasn't something that you necessarily like actively like experimented with or tried on your own, right? Do you feel like that's kind of like the the best way to like enter into that to just kind of like wait for the spirit to like almost like bring that up in you? I would say so. I think I had a misconception of it that it was going to be very robotic, like okay. that that the Holy Spirit would force me to speak and move my mouth and kind of like take over me. Yeah. I mean, that was I was like a young teenager, right? So like I think that that kind once I kind of realized like, oh, that's not it's a partnership. Like, Mm -hmm. yes, he is like prompting me to, to do something, but it's also me, like the Holy Spirit's not going to just like open my mouth for me and like make me speak. You know what I mean? So it's like a partnership of that mystery of where he's guiding, but then we also have to step into it as well. Mm -hmm. I think of what, you know, Paul says in first Corinthians 14, he says, you mentioned it earlier, but he said, I pray with my spirit. Mm -hmm. I pray with my mind. So it's very intentional, Mm -hmm. right? It's not like, uh, I pray with my mind, and then I get taken over by the Spirit. Right. You know? yeah. Not to say that that can never happen, because right. I think that there are times when that does happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I know someone very close to me, that very high uh, high credibility, uh, that that was her experience the first mm-hmm. time she mm-hmm. spoke in tongues. And she only spoke in tongues a few times over the course of her life. Mm-hmm. Um, and every time it happened, it was more like the Holy Spirit was just mm-hmm. like she could sense it coming on, mm-hmm. but didn't have a lot of control. So I, I, I think that that can happen, but I think more often than not, it's a gift that just like we pray with our mind, we can pray with our spirit. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, yeah. And it's I, I can't do it on the spot. Like, not at all. Like, if it's mm-hmm. spirit's doing it, like he's doing it right and i i do have full control like like in my journey like i stopped it because i was uncomfortable Mm. with it right so i had full control to stop it Mm -hmm. uh, and then i had full control to let it go once i got more comfortable with it Mm -hmm. well god's character is so loving and so gracious and gentle and i i don't feel like it is in his heart typically Mm -hmm. to kind of overtake us in this kind of almost like violent way no no yeah 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 Mm -hmm. but if you look at like acts chapter two when the holy spirit first comes on the church and they're speaking to God in all these languages. Now, in that particular case, you're speaking in languages that were known languages, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and God was using it as a very, it's almost like a reverse of the Tower of Babel, you mm-hmm. know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, you get the sense the Holy Spirit came up upon them, and not that they were robotic or anything, but they, it was just very spontaneous, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, but I think at other times, it's, you know, more under our control, and yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, you know, we've talked about all these different prayer practices this week, and most of them have been something that you kind of, like, actively decide that you're going to, like, set aside time, you know, to practice, like, you know, praying the Lord's Prayer or fasting or, like, or a prayer walk or whatever it might be. Is this something that you, like, kind of choose to actively enter into and pursue, like, as a regular part of your rhythm, or is it just kind of something that is every now and then? Like, how do you approach it in, like, a practical way? Yeah, I think for me it's very much... Often it happens during worship. It's very mm-hmm. rarely that I'm just sitting there and just break out in it. It's kind of flows with the rhythm of my just my own prayer life. Like, you know, sometimes we sit down before the Lord and we have a lot to say, and sometimes mm-hmm. we don't. Mm-hmm. And I think it's very similar with, with the prayer language. Like, there's been seasons of my life where it's happened every day for months, and mm-hmm. then there's been seasons where it's like, crickets, you know, so I, I can't really say it's like, oh, three times a week at this time, you know, but it's, it's very natural. Do you connect those seasons? Is there anything specific happening in your life in those seasons? Is it like a closer time with the Lord or further? Like, is there anything that you can almost like connect the dots with as far as that? Or is it just kind of like a mystery? That's a good question. It's not an emotional thing, but Mm. I think when I am going through something and my emotions are 
you know, when you're grieving or when you're stressed mm. or when you're burdened with something and you're just feeling really deeply, yeah. a lot of times for me, it's a way of expressing that. Totally. Well, Andy, you mentioned that, you know, you tend to be a little bit more cerebral in your yeah, relationship yeah. with God. Yeah. And so it, yeah. this represented, I think, maybe not the opposite of that, but like a, a, a count, a critical counter to that sure. in, in your life. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's definitely a critical counter. Like, I think that's a good way to put it. Right. Mm. Um, and there's p- times where like, I have no idea what I'm praying about. Right. I can right. have an idea based off of what's going on in my life, but I try to just kind of mm. give it to God and be like, okay, you know what you're doing right now. And yeah. I just have to trust you with whatever it is. Right. Yeah. And so that gives me this place of surrender everything to me, Mm. my mind, my everything about me Mm, to him. And I feel like that's what he's given. That's why he's given it to me. So that's just, it's another way of surrender for me. Yeah, totally. And there's a lot of mystery in that, which which can make us uncomfortable. And that can be scary, right? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 And for me, a lot of it surrounds, like you said, spiritual warfare. Like a lot of it does surround spiritual warfare specifically for me, whether other people or myself or whatever it may be. It sound, the word intensity comes to mind because I know it, it's not necessarily that it is like heightened emotions, but maybe it's, it's spiritually intense. It, it's a time in life when there's like the spirit's just doing a lot, right? Yeah. 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 That's cool. Michael, I, I wanted to ask you, is mm-hmm. this something that you've ever like engaged with? Is mm-hmm. this something that you've practiced? Is it a part of your regular walk with God? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, my journey has been kind of interesting because I grew up in a church that didn't really, they weren't really like anti-gifts, um, but they just never talked about them. It was as if they didn't exist. And so my mom had had some experience with the Holy Spirit like this in her life. And so through her, um, I found myself attending some um, maybe charismatic, um, some maybe slightly almost Pentecostal services growing up from time to time uh, on a Thursday night. And uh, often they would uh, talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, mm. that you need to have this kind of a secondary experience that every Christian needs to have to be really filled with the Holy Spirit. And then the sign of that was receiving the gift of tongues. And I think this is one reason why this has been so divisive in churches is because often this gift is associated with this teaching that there's a secondary Mm. normative experience every Christian needs to have. So you need to be saved and you sort of get the Holy Spirit to some degree there, but then Mm. there's a secondary experience of being baptized in the Holy Spirit that's what the early church experienced, um, and that that gives you power to live the Christian life. Mm-hmm. And unless you have that experience, you're not fully, you know, mm-hmm. walking in the Spirit. Yeah. Well, when you when that's taught or believed, it kind of leads a church into like there's first class Christians and second class mm-hmm. Christians, and yeah. it becomes very divisive because now it's I have this gift, you have that gift, and if you don't, you're not full of the Spirit, and you can see how divisive. Um, so I think that was very damaging, but that was my experience growing up. Um, and so actually, um, I went through, I won't, it's way too long a story, but I went through very six very dark years in my walk with Jesus yeah. uh, f- in my kind of middle school and the high school and the early college. And during that time, I was pursuing the Lord seriously in many different ways to, to break through that darkness. And one of them was I went forward many times to be prayed for, to receive this gift. I thought this must be the answer. And had some really negative experiences where people would kind of lay their hands on you and they would encourage you just to make noises with your mouth, like syllables. Mm, mm. They would compare it to like priming a pump, like a water pump. You step out in faith and start making this. And that's if you've never tried, that's really hard to do. Mm -hmm. Like it's like it just sounds ridiculous. (laughs) And uh, and so I, you know, they'd be laying hands on me. I'd be doing this. Of course, I'm like a high school kid with adults around. It's I'm super introverted at that point in my life. Very awkward. And they would be start to say, oh, it's coming. It's coming. And I knew nothing was happening. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. Um, But I went through this many times. Um, But it's interesting that after that dark, the dark period end, and I broke into this new era of the Holy Spirit's work in my life. Mm. Um, it was just like a radical night and day. And um, about nine months after that, that uh, time, that new, that new era began, mm-hmm. um, Lynn and I had just gotten married. And I was uh, in my room just praying one day. And um, the, I felt like the Lord said, I want you to open your mouth and speak in tongues. And I, I had no desire for the gift now because I, I, I had met the Lord. The Holy Spirit was fully operational in my life. I had no need for that gift. I never really wanted the gift. I just wanted the Holy Spirit, right? It was super unemotional, but I was in a very much at that era of my life, extreme listen and follow mode. So I did. I opened my mouth and a couple recognizable sentences came out. I mean, it was language. I knew what it was like to fake it. I knew what it was like not. And hmm. There was no emotion to it. 
And um, so I did that for a few minutes. I could see, I could hear him repeating, you know. And, um, you know, I stopped that. And then I felt like the Lord told me to go out and to do this with Lynn, right? So we've been married, like, two months now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And it was a very radical, listen, follow time in our life. And I was super embarrassed. Um, but Lynn, you know, like, it, everything was game back then. I mean, we yeah. were... We were walking by faith in crazy ways. And so I went out. I remember she was cooking spaghetti at the, in the kitchen. And I went out. And I said, hey, Lynn, I think I'm supposed to do something. And she said, OK. So I gave her a big bear hug because I was too embarrassed to do it in front of her. Uh. And I just opened my mouth and I spoke. It just, you know, totally under control. It's like, mm-hmm. and, um, and I got done. And I said, OK, I, I think that's it, you know. And she said, OK. Like, <laughs> like as, if, as if it was the most normal thing in the world. And so I said, OK, I'm going to go back and pray some more. She said, great. And so I went back into my room and continued just, you know, praying time with the Lord. And about 10 minutes later, she came in and said, would you like the interpretation for what you said? Mm. And I was completely blown away. Mm. Um, And uh, she gave it to me and I wrote it down. And honestly, it uh, it didn't even strike me as that profound at the time. Mm. But about six months later, I look back and I, I recognize it was the most profound thing I ever could have said. And to this day, that if there was one thing I could have said that was over my life, I mean, this was it. And what I, what I had said is, praise you, Lord Jesus, for you've delivered me from the bondage of my mind. And that was really at the root of my dark years. It's that the Lord had given me a very strong mind, but my mind was my ultimate authority. And what he wanted to do was make the Holy Spirit my ultimate authority. Yeah. And so he needed to bring my, kind of break me <laughs> Yeah. Until my mind came under the authority of my spirit so I could really be the person he called me to be and lead like he wanted me to be. Mm. And so that's what had happened about nine months before. And so when I spoke that, I wasn't even, I wasn't in that mind space. Yeah. But, um, you know, to this day, um, that has just been very, a powerful thing. Yeah. And so for me, you know, um, it was very much under my control. Mm-hmm. Um and it's uh, not like he's expanded my language a lot, but much like Andy, it's, it almost represents that surrender. And mm-hmm. I find in times of worship, very much, uh, this happens. And again, it's all under my control. It's just, it's a way for me to express the deepest part of me in a way that words cannot express. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, but it also happens in times of spiritual warfare. It also happens in times of worry or fear that I find that when I go to, I'll be driving along the freeway and just praying there's something in my worry and fear that, that often I just go into this other language. Um, and it's, uh, it's really a rich gift. It's funny because I don't really think about it a lot. It's mm-hmm. very natural. Um, it's not like I've ever felt the need to share this so others have it mm-hmm. or something. Um, but it's been a tremendous gift. And even the last few years become more significant in my life, I would say. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. That's amazing. I was so like just wrapped by that yeah. story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something I'm just picking up on is just this idea of like fruit, right? Like good fruit coming out of this. Like, you know, you were sharing that initial experience. It sounds yeah. like you were, there was a lot of like anxiousness, oh, negativity. Yes. Like yeah. it just, it wasn't a positive experience right. for you. Right. And this gift is meant to bear good fruit in your Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, when it's tied to this kind of doctrinal position that everyone needs this gift yeah. and this is the sign yeah. It can become very destructive. And that's where I'm slow to speak of it sometimes because I think that uh, even though I articulate that, sometimes people still have a hard time hearing that. Yeah. And they still think, no, you, you really want everyone to have this. And it's like, no, I, I don't have any agenda mm-hmm. you know, for that. Um, but if it's a gift the Lord wants to give you, then I hope it's a gift that's a blessing to you as it's been to me. Totally. That's kind of the last thing I wanted to ask is if there's someone watching this video that maybe like desires this gift, is this something that you can like actively, like how would you move towards this gift kind Mm. of in a practical way? I know Christy, Mm -hmm. you kind of had some, like just a heart for that. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, obviously the scriptures say desire, it's good to desire spiritual gifts. So the desire for that is, is a good thing. And, and then just take that desire to the Lord and ask him if, if you can have the gift. And I think even this gift is oftentimes in scriptures, we see that this gift comes through laying on of hands. Mm. And so maybe there's a life group leader or somebody, you know, that you would trust that Mm. has that gift that you could ask them to pray for you. It's as simple as that. It's not, it doesn't equal maturity. You don't Mm. have to be a certain, like have it all, you know, that's not it at all. Um, and you know, it, you don't have to be a special person. It's just, 
it's just a gift that maybe God wants to give you. Yeah. And if he, he doesn't want to give you that gift, that's okay too. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that he has other things for you. Yeah. I would just start with asking him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Andy, any just final encouragements for people who might desire this gift? Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, very similar. I, I would say yeah. just pray about it. Ask God. Um, and if he says no, that, that's okay. Like, mm-hmm. he's got something else for you, right? Like, there's, you look at those lists of those gifts, right? There's a lot of gifts in there that I would love. <laughs> the Lord has very clearly, at least at this point in my life, he said, no, they're not for you, mm-hmm. right? And that's totally. okay. Like, my role, my job is to do what God has called me to do, right? Mm-hmm. And so if you're listening to this, you're watching this, like, your role is to, to do what God has called you to do, right? Totally. And, if, and use the gifts that he's given you and don't force he can't force God to do anything he's gonna mm-hmm. do what he yeah. wants to do yeah. uh, and just surrender to him yeah mm-hmm. cool mm-hmm. sweet thank you guys so much for just mm-hmm. speaking into this conversation um, I know I'm hoping this was a blessing for everybody that was uh, watching um, hopefully you guys joined us for all week this week uh, a prayer week at Rocky Peak um, if you're watching this the day it comes out this weekend we've got one more message in our series mm-hmm. uh, the priority of prayer yeah this weekend that you're gonna be bringing yeah we're really excited about that yeah mm-hmm. I think it's gonna be really good so thank you guys for joining us all week we'll see you this weekend at church bye guys <laughs>